Thank you very much for buying one of the gauge kits from Steamhead. This is what will have arrived. Other things that you will require are a couple of AA batteries, a small posi drive screwdriver, and a flat bladed screwdriver. Some super glue, I would recommend using super glue because it really does work very well for this sort of thing. Although if you'd rather not or have some other glue, you could use general purpose adhesive. A pair of tweezers may well be useful for the little fiddly screws. Um, for decorating it, I'd suggest using this plastic coat spray paint. It's really good, it's metallic, I use it lots on all my machines. It gives a really good finish. This is the 400 milliliter uh, spray can, but you can get 200 milliliters as well, and you can get it in all sorts of different colours. Also, I'd suggest using some metallic felt tips. They're really good for decorating the details, and again, they're available in lots of different colours, although these are the only two that my children have left me with, kind. Some cello tape or insulating tape to insulate the wires when you join them up. It would also be useful to have some blue tacks, you can hold things in place while you spray them, and a drop of 3-in-1 oil or something similar. The first thing to do is to remove the three brass screws that are holding everything together. You may need to use a screwdriver just to start loosening them a little bit, but then you can use your finger just to undo them. Whatever's easiest. The three brass screws are quite long because I was thinking you may want to install the finished gauge in a cabinet or through some wood or something else which might be quite deep so the screws are long enough to allow you to achieve that. Once you've got the top off I suggest you put all the parts in some sort of plastic tray just to keep them together. Well, I've counted them and there are 28 parts. If you want to check you've got a complete set. Right. Now the first thing to do is to paint the enclosure and the window. In order to do that we're going to peel off some of this protective coating, this protective film from this front plastic the window we're going to peel off just the surrounding part, not the centre, because we want the centre to remain clear. And leaving the plastic on will mean that the paint can't actually get to it. Check when you're doing this that you get every little bit of plastic off. Sometimes it sticks around the twiddly bits. Right, so that's OK. So we've still got the protective plastic film in the middle and on the back. And obviously this has none. So, let's go and spray. When you use spray paint, you want to use it somewhere with good ventilation. So somewhere perhaps like a garage or an outbuilding. Or if it's a nice day and there isn't much wind, you could do it in the garden. Make sure you cover everything, all the surrounding area, with newspaper so you don't get any spray anywhere else. It's very important to shake the can of paint for a minute after you hear the ball start to rattle. That ensures that it's all mixed up properly and will work well. Personally, I always find it easiest to rest what I'm painting on some scrap card. That way it makes it really easy to turn the pieces so you get them evenly painted. Also, what I always do is to hoover them before I paint them to get all the dust off. So if you have some sort of hoover brush, just hoover the inside because dust sticks to plastic like this and you don't notice it until you've spray painted it so there we are, that'll do. I recommend spray painting at a distance of about 25 centimetres, something like that, about a foot roughly and don't put it on, even though it's very tempting to spray loads and loads on, do far lighter coats, it's much better, they dry more quickly and give a much better finish, so... A 
And then when you have finished spraying, turn the can upside down and just give it a little short burst to clear the nozzle. And then leave the paint to dry for, well, this particular paint, probably about 10 minutes and then it's ready for another coat. Far better to do two or three coats than to absolutely swamp it because it'll run and it'll take days to dry. The next thing is to assemble the gears and the crank. Now you can glue them all together and then paint them all the same colour, although I'm just going to explain how if you wanted to you could paint the central gear a different colour to the outer gear. So we'll have a look at that first of all. So before we glue anything together, I've included this part in the kit and that allows you to stop paint getting around the centre of the gear. It just pushes into the hexagonal hole like so and you only need this if you're going to paint them separate colours. That means that you can spray this one colour and then the middle gear you can spray a different colour. It's important not to get paint around where you're going to glue them together because the glue is only as strong as the paint that you use and that's not a very good idea. So using this means that you can spray that, lift that out and you will still have clean plastic underneath where you can glue it. So let's do that first of all. As always I'm going to hoover it first to make sure there's no dust. It's a little bit more tricky with these pieces because you can suck them up into the hoover so just hang on to them. And with this one let's just hoover that up. That's it. Because I want them to be different colours, I'm going to put the little paint mask back into the centre of the gear and sit that on a bit of card there, and that's fine, you don't have to spray the back of it, just the front. It doesn't matter which way round it goes either. It can go that way or you can have it that way, it really makes no difference at all. So that's that, and then I'm going to paint this central gear a different colour. I'm going to use a little bit of blue tack just to stand it up like that and then it won't fall over when you paint it because of the pressure of the paint. I think I'm going to do this part brass. So get the brass paint again, make sure it's still shaken properly because it does settle and then do the same thing as before, just turning it through 90 degrees and then clear the nozzle and leave that to dry. Okay, that's shaken up. This is plastic coat as well, the chrome or silver paint. Really nice finish. Strangely enough though, you don't want to make this thick at all. If you use this as much as I use the brass paint, it doesn't dry for days and even if you touch it after a week, you'll still get your fingerprints on it. So what I've found is with the silver paint, use it really sparingly, one coat. So I'm just going to not put on much at all and again you don't have to spray the back of the gear because you, it won't be seen there that's it and then clear the nozzle and that's it right the first coat is dry so I'm going to do another coat and then clear the nozzle. And a second coat on the gear. That's it. That first gear is now set, so we can take that away, peel off the blue tack, and as you can see, underneath the paint hasn't actually covered it. It's just protected by the shape of the gear, so that's fine. While the paint's drying, we can carry on assembling the other gears and the pointer. The pulley is all complete, so you don't have to worry about that. This is the crank, and this needs to have the centre of the crank, this strangely shaped object, pushed through the hexagonal hole. I suggest you line up this piece with the part of the gear that hasn't got a hole in it, although if you want to do it a different way it's completely up to you. So that is going to fit through there. 
Now if you're using another sort of glue, I suggest you spread it onto this part first. If you're going to use super glue, then I suggest you just put a little, ever such a little amount, just on each side of the hexagon on a little blob there. And then put the hexagon through the gear and just wriggle it home, that's it. And then press it firmly just while it sets. In fact, if you want super glue to set more quickly, um, because moisture sets it off, you can go <sighs> on the different surfaces you're going to glue, and the super glue will set almost instantly. That's why it likes sticking skin because of the moisture in the skin. If you want to slow super glue down, you can keep it in the fridge while you're not using it because there's no moisture in the fridge and because it's colder the chemical reaction that sets it takes longer Top tips right so that's set in there now what we can do is to glue this final part onto the top of the crank it's going to go like that so if you're using other glue just put a dab on it I'm going to put a dab of super glue on here there you go I don't need that much and I'm just going to position it by eye just want it to line up with the part below it so it looks like this so it's all lined up a little bit, little bit difficult to see because everything's not painted yet but that's fine so that's what the cranks going to look like this is the pointer that's going to point to the dial that you're going to read let's move that out of the way this needs to glue onto the pointer pivot point which is that and you line this up again just by getting just again just by lining up the front and the back until they they line up properly rather than having to put glue on first you can do if you're using another sort of glue but if you're using super glue and it's all getting a bit fiddly and you're worried about it sticking in the wrong place if you hold that in the right place because super glue is so thin you can just drop a little bit a little blob at that end and capillary action will take it underneath once that's set you can also turn it over and just drop a little bit under this end just up against it and that will run between the two and stick it really quite well now these three pieces are stuck together you can paint them and I've stuck them all together so they're all going to be the same colour but that's fine if you wanted to again you could use that little paint mask and paint the outside one colour and the inside a different colour it's up to you entirely I'm just going to paint them all brass this way so that's fine the crank is going to sit this way so that's okay and the pointer is going to sit this way as well so with the aid of another little bit of blue tack I'm just going to stand that up properly just to make sure we get paint all around the teeth I'll do the same with the pointer there we go, right. That's it. That's dry now, that's about 10 minutes drying time. So, let's put the final coat. This is all very exciting. While the rest of the paint dries, this gear and this gear are now dry so we can fix them together. So to fix them together, remove the little paint mask. Um, that hasn't got any other future purpose so if you want to stick that on somewhere or turn it into something, feel free to. 
So there you can see that there's no paint around the centre and like we said before that the paint hasn't gone under here so that's fine. If we're using some other sort of adhesive I just dab a little bit around here, not too much so it squeezes out everywhere, just a little bit. I'm going to use super glue so I'm just going to put a little bit on each of the hexagons like that and then I'm going to push that through the painted side of the gear like so. If it's a bit stiff just squeeze it together in the center to ease it together um, don't pull it by the edges because you could snap the gear. There you go. So that looks really nice. Multicoloured gear. Fabulous. Right, here's a fun thing to do. Let's decorate the inside, the back of these. All these raised sections, the design at the back, they're all raised by about a millimetre, so it should be pretty easy to colour them, to decorate them. So I'm going to use this silver metallic marker. Lovely. All my machines include some sort of little red gem. I found they just look so great, they're really eye catching, so I thought it only fair to include one with this kit. It's a little plastic ruby and it goes into the little rebated hole here. So this is where the tweezers are probably going to come in handy. Just put a dob of your selected adhesive, there you go, in the back of that little hole. And then with some tweezers, or if you've got very small fingers, that's fine. I'm just going to drop that in there and just line it up with the middle. And that looks lovely, really eye-catching. Brilliant! So the next thing is to attach the motor. Here's the little motor and he's held in place by two extremely small positive drive screws. So I suggest you use your tweezers just to position the screws in the two holes. It makes it far easier. So the screws are in the holes. The next thing is to line up the screws with one of these three pairs of threaded holes and the easiest way I've found of doing that is to position the motor in the centre and then twist it gently until one of the screws actually does go in like that and then you know that the other screw will line up as well. Don't over tighten them, just tighten them firmly. It's important that they don't go too far into the motor because they could end up stopping it from turning properly. Right, so that's the motor fitted. And what you'll need for that is one of these metal axles and a spacer. Here's the spacer. Simply fold it over. It's like a little jig to help you set how far you put the axles in. Poke it through the hole in the centre and then pull it tightly and twist it because sometimes some paint gets down the end and makes it a little bit stiff. Also what I suggest you do is to get a little drop of oil, so three in one or whatever's handy, and just put a speck of it, you don't need very much, just around the axle. And then when you poke that into the hole That'll ensure, because this is spinning so fast, that it doesn't stick or squeak or anything. Then the next thing to do is to fix this into the enclosure through this hole here. And you need first to place the brass washer over the hole so you can then push that in. Now the way to fix it in is to put the spacer between the top of the axle and the pulley and then just push it down quite firmly like that. Then turn it over and you'll see that some of the axle is and you'll see that some of the axle is sticking out at the back. And then with your chosen glue, a little dab of it around where the 
axle comes through. Super glue is very good for this because it's so thin the capillary action will carry it down inside the hole in a minute gap and fix it really firmly in place. And you can turn it over back the other way and remove the spacer and then you've got a beautiful pulley which oh, is so satisfying when things spin like that freely. Then you need to get the drive belt, loop it around the pulley and around the motor spindle like so. That's it. So as the little motor spindle turns it's going to turn this far slower and more powerfully and very quietly. The next thing to do is to fit the gear that we actually painted different colours. This doesn't have a washer underneath. All you need to do as before, put one of the axles in, pull it towards you and twist it to make sure it spins freely. And then this one goes into the second hole. Like so. As before, put the card spacer on and then push the axle in. Turn it over and repeat the process with the glue. When the glue is dry, turn it back over and ease out the spacer. And then what you will have is the second gear being turned by the pulley, which is great. The final gear is the crank, that's what we're going to fit now, and that's just like the previous one. Get one of the axles, push it through the hole in the middle, and just pull it and twist it to make sure there's no paint that's going to make it jam up, and that's fine. This one pushes into the final hole that's next to the jewel. Make sure you get the teeth lined up, and then push that home, again with the spacer. Firmly home, turn it over and put the glue on. Then when that's dry, turn it back over and ease out the spacer. That's it. So now the motor turns that gear, that gear turns the second gear and the second gear turns the crank. Now the next thing is to fix the readout into a gauge. This one comes with it, which is the Kraken Proximity in Fathoms, but equally you can design your own one and replace it with that. This is quite fiddly as you need to use these two very small brass screws. When you get one screw in, it does make it an awful lot easier. And tighten the screw with a small flat bladed screwdriver. Don't over tighten it because it'll tend to twist to the cardboard. And once you've got that put in, you can do the one on the other side. So that's the lovely readout fitted in place. The next thing to fit in is the pointer. Put one of the axles through the hole, and as before, twist it backwards and forwards just to make sure it turns freely. Now the pointer fits into this hole, the remaining hole down here. Line it up just so it's sitting in and then lift, lift it over the crank so the pin on the crank is within this slot. Not that hole but this slot. Once you've done that you can use the spacer again to finish pushing this axle home. It's a little bit tricky to fit here so I suggest you bend the end over and then it'll just slide in there like so and you can push the axle home. Then turn it over and dab a bit of glue in the hole. Now this doesn't actually stick out, the axle is not long enough to stick out so make sure Super glue is fine because if you put blob a little bit down there, it'll run around down into the hole. If you're using some other sort of adhesive, try and get as much in there as possible to make sure it sticks properly. 
and then when that's dry you can turn it over and you have an almost finished gauge so as the motor turns this gear that turns the middle gear the middle gear turns the crank and the crank moves the pointer backwards and forwards across the display Now it might be worth mounting this into your machine at this stage, invention, um, before wiring it up because in some ways it's easier once this is fixed in to connect the battery to the wires. Alternatively, you can do it now. I didn't fix the wires together because you may want to add your own switch or some other control. Easiest way, if you haven't got a soldering on, is to twist them really well round and round and round and then fold them over so end up looking like that we'll do that with the other ones as well if you want to add a switch you can add it within the circuit somewhere so that these two wires would be split by another switch wind them together and fold them over and then to stop them touching to insulate them get some cello tape or insulating tape and wrap it around and that will ensure that the wires can't touch and you won't run your battery flat well, I'll put the other one there so they're now insulated To put the batteries inside the case, you can slide it open. Two AA batteries. Put them in like so. Slide the case back on. And then there's a little switch here. So the moment of truth. If you want to run your gauge off any voltage up to 12 volts and you've opted for the special connection, not the battery pack, then you'll get one of these. The way to connect this up is to connect the red wire to the red wire of the motor. Twist them together. If you haven't got a soldering on, that's absolutely fine. Bend them over. Finally found the end of the cello tape and just wrap some around the connection and that will ensure it doesn't touch up to any of the other connections. You could use masking tape or you could use insulating tape in better and that's fine. Then you want to connect the black wire from the motor to the black wire from the a little circuit that comes with it plus I would suggest connecting it to another bit of wire because you want a third connection to connect up to your power supply so I'll wind them together or you can solder them and then I will find another bit of solder tape Another bit of solo tape, lovely, and wind that around the joint. So we have the red wire from the motor going to the red wire little circuit, black wire from the motor going to the black wire of the little circuit, and also to a second black wire. It's a little spaghetti like, but that means now. You have a yellow wire and a black wire to connect to your 12 volt or 9 volt or 6 volt supply. So let's connect that up now. I'm going to use a power supply but equally you know what you're using. So the yellow wire goes on to the positive supply which is usually red and the black wire, one of the three that's connected together 
goes on to the negative or naught volt connection. I've got this connected to 12 volts and you can see once you connect it up a little light comes on. Possibly use the light in some way, I'm not sure. But what that little circuit does is turn the voltage into 3 volts and then your gauge will work perfectly. You can always add another switch if you like in the circuit somewhere so you can switch it on and off from the outside of your amazing invention but otherwise it will just run like this. The circuit does get a little bit warm especially this part so make sure there's free airflow around it and make sure that none of the other wires can touch any of these contacts or the little components on the back because they could short circuit it and stop it working. We need to finish preparing this bit, this is very enjoyable because we can now carefully peel off the remaining protective film which you may have done already and we'll peel off peel it off the back as well peel it off the back as well fabulous look at that brilliant there are two ways of mounting your gauge if what you're mounting it through is very thick I've just used this to model the idea you cut out a hole that's 94 millimeters diameter and then it will fit over the gauge so if we look at the back you can then screw through that into there and it will clamp it in place. These three holes are on a diameter of 102 millimeters and they're 120 degrees apart and I recommend each one of these should be four and a half millimeters diameter. It's a very common drill size also means there's a little bit of room just to make sure everything fits and lines up. If you have a thinner surface, such as is modelled here with this single piece of cardboard, you need to cut a hole that's 90 millimetres diameter. I've written this upside down, so I'm going to turn that round now. That means that your gauge will fit behind this, it won't poke through. So, to illustrate, that's sitting on the front of the gauge, which means you can then clamp it together. Whichever size hole you use, you finally put the window on the front and tighten the three screws up, the long brass screws, so they go through, through the surface and into the back of the gauge. Don't over tighten it again, just tighten it firmly. And there's your finished gauge.